Atrial fibrillation is a very common condition that affects millions of Americans. For orientation, here is a heart model showing the two top chambers and the two lower chambers. The top chamber is called the atrium, the bottom chamber is called the ventricle. It typically occurs in patients who are over age 65, who have high blood pressure, or have congestive heart failure, high thyroid, or a few other conditions that affect the valve of the heart. We can typically divide atrial fibrillation into two different types. One is paroxysmal and one is persistent. Paroxysmal atrial fibrillation occurs in patients who have atrial fibrillation intermittently or on and off. For example, every two months, every one month, every few weeks, patient can go into an episode of atrial fibrillation, and after a few hours, or even overnight, fibrillation will typically disappear on its own. Then there are patients who have what we call persistent atrial fibrillation. In other words, atrial fibrillation is ongoing all the time, 24-7. The heart is fibrillating continuously from morning to night and never stops. Typically, if you gave a patient a medication, it won't stop the fibrillation, but may only slow it down. You can bring the patient to perform cardioversion, where the physician apply electrical paddles to the chest of the patient and deliver electrical shock to the heart. That can restore sinus rhythm. But the next time patient goes into fibrillation, typically it will stay persistent again. The difference between persistent and paroxysmal atrial fibrillation is an important one. Typically, if patients have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, it generally means the heart or the atrium is in a fairly healthy state that is able to maintain regular rhythm for the majority of the time. In those patients, we can expect up to 90% success rate for ablation. In patients with persistent atrial fibrillation, they have had atrial fibrillation typically for a longer period of time. They usually have more comorbidities such as high blood pressure or congestive heart failure. Once fibrillation has been ongoing for more than a year non-stop, the success rate for ablation typically goes down significantly. In patients that have persistent fibrillation for a long time, and if they don't have any significant comorbidities, no heart attack, no heart failure, no diabetes, no high blood pressure, success rate for those persistent fibrillation can still be as high as 80-90%. Regardless of the etiology of atrial fibrillation, be it high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, valvular disease, the commonality of all atrial fibrillation is that the pulmonary veins are always the culprit for atrial fibrillation. Therefore, the way to treat atrial fibrillation or I should say the way to cure atrial fibrillation and eliminate the focus of atrial fibrillation is to perform ablation around the pulmonary veins. Here is a close-up view of the heart, the right atrium, and on the back, the left atrium. As we talked about earlier, the pulmonary veins are responsible for causing atrial fibrillation in the left atrium. Here is the inside view of the pulmonary vein. You can see deep in the recess are the right superior and right inferior pulmonary veins. On this side is the opening or the orifice of the left superior and left inferior pulmonary veins. When we do ablation for atrial fibrillation, catheter is passed from the right atrium through a very thin membrane into the left atrium. Catheters are then positioned around the vein and we deliver ablation in a circle or a circumferential fashion. The ablation basically is done by delivering electrical burns around the veins themselves but not in the vein. On this side similarly catheter is positioned and ablation performed in a point-by-point -point fashion to go around the vein 
in order to perform electrical isolation of the vein.